Greetings, citizens. Well, as you know now, the PTU is now wave one for some backers, and uh, something I can go ahead and finally reveal to you all is that um, uh, Will Leverett said I could do this. He says he doesn't advise it because some people get take this kind of uh, personally or they get attacked, but uh, since uh, for a little while now, I have actually been Evo Cotti. And so I want to give you go ahead and a little bit of a, an introduction to some of the things you're going to find in 2.6 and uh, my general thoughts about uh, we'll start with Star Marine and we'll get into the flight model and things in a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the initial things. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice, you're going to notice right off the bat, is the the menus. Uh, the menus now are a lot more uh, high detailed. They're a lot more animated. They're refined, uh, streamlined, and uh, while there's still uh, there's still work to be done on them. Uh, they present a much more professional appearance than what we've seen prior in Star Citizen. And uh, this overall uh, is going to let you go ahead and do things like set up your weapons, equipment, armor, ship equipment, whatever, all inside these menus without needing to walk directly to your hangar or go into some other portion of the game to set them up and then join the online portions. Uh, of course, uh, there's so, some of the work that's involved in these right now with this current build is that um, right now... Uh, with Arena Commander for the first iteration of the public build, you after a round is over, you do have to restart the game. And of course, we still are in the testing phase, so get your bug reports in and with as much detail as possible to help the developers out. So let's get into my current thoughts about Star Citizen's newest edition, Star Marine. I happen to think this has a lot of potential. Uh, right now, there's no uh, sprint bar or endurance bar, so to speak in it so sprinting is uh, still very much an option but the pacing is, uh, is, a, is a little bit slower than what you saw on the initial dev playthroughs and um, there's still some work to be done now how one of the things that was confusing to me was the cover system there is a cover system in the game how it works is that when you get to an obstacle or a corner or something like that uh, when you get close to the wall for example your gun will come up in front of you you'll see it and what you do is you look out slightly in the direction of the opening, whether it's your left or your right, and you use your iron sights. Now, once you do that, your character will lean out from around that corner. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to use. Uh, it, a, lot of people, a lot of times people, when they, they have cover systems, they use something like the Q and the E button to go ahead and just kind of have you lean out. Uh, in some regards, I personally speaking would appreciate a system like that to some degree, but... Uh, this is kind of a unique approach, so we'll have to see how this develops. Uh, still some things to work out on. Sometimes it feels like you have to, your positioning has to be uh, pretty much exact for it to do what it's supposed to do. But uh, as I said, this is development, and just give them your feedback on that. Let them know what you think. I think the addition of a Q and an E lean out here would be much appreciated. Uh, of course, you can pick up weapons in the starting room. So you do only start off with a pistol and your primary weapon. And if you want to pick up uh, a third weapon, a sniper rifle or whatever, uh, be sure to check your spawn room because often there's crates with additional weapons or different types of pistols or whatnot. You know, shotguns, sniper rifles, energy pistols or ballistic pistols, all kind of sitting in there. Now there's are there are red shields uh, around uh, your spawn location that prevents the enemy from actually running into your spawn location, preventing spawn camping. Um, of course, is of course is a great thing in, in any FPS. As any of you who have ever played uh, other FPSs know, spawn campers suck and should die in a fire. The radar in Star Marine is frankly the envy of these of the uh, flying universe out there. And frankly, I'd rather see this radar uh, used inside these ships than actually that big glowing ball that we have right now. Frankly, it's a lot more readable. It's very close to what you would see in something like Elite Dangerous. Now, what it does indicate to you is the location of your allies, and when the enemy makes noise, uh, something like shooting their gun or some sort of other loud noise, they will show up on the radar. So, for those of you looking to stay off your enemy radar, uh, try to move silent, try to crouch, try to uh, slow walk. Don't just dash in. The faster, the louder you are, the greater chance you're going to give away your position, and they're going to know you're coming. Now, grenades and health both have two uses, and of course you can bleed to death in this, so look for med kits, you'll find them along the walls, and as you're running low, and grenades, uh, you can hold them longer to cook them before you throw them. Be careful though, they do kind of have a tendency to uh, 
I find in my experience, roll a little weird. They are shaped a little bit like a Pringles can. So when you apply physics to that, sometimes I find that they, they kind of go in weird directions a little bit. Uh, but overall, they're still pretty manageable. Uh, how, how lobbying works is you look over a, the 50% line, a visible 50% line of your screen. And when you throw it, you go over. And when it's below that, it's under, uh, you roll it. The only difficulties I found in this is that when, say, you're on a balcony above and there's like a railing in front of you and they're down below you and you want to chuck that grenade, uh, sometimes you will actually throw it right at your feet because you're rolling it right into the banister that you're staying in front of. So just be aware of that if you're above trying to throw down. Your best bet probably at this point in time is not to throw a grenade until they can hash that out. Graphically, Star Marine, I think, looks really great. Uh, it sounds really great. They've got a lot of good effects and things going on here. There's a lot of room for improvement still, and but I think as star, far as a first iteration, uh, this is a very solid start. So, as I said, uh, get out there, play it, give your bug reports, give your thoughts, give your opinions. Let the forums know what you think, but do it in, try to do it in a more reasonable manner than I normally do. And uh, go ahead and just let them know what you're looking for because we are, as far as I've seen the general consensus, looking for something a little bit more tactical. And in a game that's going to have permadeath, you will kind of uh, hope to have something that's uh, a little less COD and maybe a little bit more Rainbow Six or something like that. Uh, because it, it, it's just a matter of pacing, it comes down to that. But I've seen that there's a lot of good improvements here from what you've seen on, on the initial live stream to what there is now. And uh, yeah, overall, I think they've made some good directions. They're taking, they've taken good feedback. And uh, it's been a really impressive experience, I think, being uh, in Evo Cotti. Uh, the devs have been really, really, just really, really aces about listening to what people say, responding, personal tells, and things like that. They're really great guys. And while I can't get to any details of anything because that's all part of the NDA, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, it's a very interesting development process and uh, let, let you know that uh, they are listening and they are taking feedback and uh, it gets a lot of hope to develop the direction of the game when you actually get your uh, to see how they interact with the people who are reporting the bugs who are testing things and they're a really good group of guys to interact with now of course uh, we will have the blast cast as regular and we have some announcements coming up about uh, additional programs we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some comparisons and thoughts of other games that we play, uh, a lot of them sci-fi, and how the development of these games and the decisions they made uh, may, in a sense, directly kind of relate to things that Star Citizen has looked at or how uh, they've made decisions for good and for bad and how we can see these working out based on, uh, to a degree, our experience in these other similar games or games that have a similar mechanic, not necessarily the same genre. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to continue to get more footage out to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you maybe look at the Herald and the Caterpillar. Not that you probably haven't seen it a million times, but in some respect, this is a little bit of a fan service for my brother. He really wants to see these ships, and uh, I did actually get him the Herald for Christmas, so Merry Christmas. All right, guys, I'll let you go and catch you next time. Thanks for watching.